Hi friends. Okay. So today I'm super excited. I'm doing a video tutorial about how to make a gnome based off of the gnome pattern that I have in my Etsy shop. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And in this video, I am making another boy gnome. There are three rows of this pattern, A, B, and C. And so once A runs out, you jump down to the next row and connect it starting at B1. So when you're finished, it'll end up looking like this all taped together. Cut out those pieces from the paper and then using the fabric guide on the pattern, cut the pieces out of the coordinating fabrics. There should be A, B, C, and D if you're making the male gnome. You'll only have A, B, and C if you want to make a girl gnome just because the girl gnomes don't have beards, but you will need yarn for those. It's a PDF pattern. It's about 16 pages. There are written instructions as well if you like those better, but I'm more of a visual person, so I figured I would make a tutorial. This is how your gnomes are going to end up. We have moved into my studio today, and if you notice how messy it is, no you didn't. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the pattern that I've made. I've made myself a version that's more durable out of muslin, um, just because I sell these gnomes. So I need a pattern that's gonna hold up a little bit better than the paper. And then using those, I'm gonna cut out all of my pieces in the coordinating fabric. So fabric A is your hat, hands, and feet fabric. I'm using this, Christmas avocados. I got it at Joann's. Fabric B is gonna be your um, body, bottom, and arm fabric. I'm gonna use this like, light green, mossy green felt. And then fabric C is your nose fabric. Um, you only need it for the nose, you don't need a lot. I'm gonna use this one. You can use any color you want. Um, that one I got as a remnant at Joann's. I would always check that section because they're usually at least 50% off. And then fabric D is your beard fabric. I'm using this that I also got at Joann's. Here I am cutting out my pattern pieces, the hat, the feet, and the hands. Um, make sure that you cut two pairs of the feet and the hands so that you have two hands and two feet. And here my pattern piece is a full piece because I went ahead and made it the full body instead of on the fold. Here, the beard, I am cutting with scissors instead of the rotary cutter because if you cut these fur fabrics from the back and you try to avoid the actual fur and only cut that piece that's on the back, you will have like very minimal shedding compared to cutting it with the rotary cutter. You want to sew on this curved seam and leave that top flat edge open. I'm using brown in my bobbin just so that you can see, but this is what the stitch on the feet will look like. Up the feet. Once you have your feet sewn, before you flip them inside out, and I feel like this is one of those things where it's good to know why, so when you flip it like this and you were to stuff it, your edge is not going to be like perfect. It's going to be a little wobbly because if you think about it, when this flips inside out, the seam allowance just collapses on itself. So you're going to want to come in here and cut little triangles like that all the way around this edge so that when it collapses, it has that extra space to fill in. All right, so once you do that to both the feet, flip them, obviously, and then we're going to stuff them and leave enough room to be able to pin or clip the top of this together just to kind of like hold it in place. One thing that I do a lot with this kind of stuff is I actually stuff these things with fabric scraps, especially if the gnome is gonna be decoration only because it gives it a little bit of weight and then it also kind of reduces waste in your mates. So if you have enough and you use the fabric scraps at some point from this project, it would be a no waste project. I sew a lot. So my fabric scraps come from all over the place. Here it is. I personally have been loving sewing clips. So I'm using those. To attach the feet to the body, I'm just finding the center point of the body piece. And now I'm finding the center point of the bottom piece. 
The bottom piece is shorter than the body, which is why you have to mark these with pins or else they will not line up. Right sides together. I'm pinning that center point into both. Now take the feet and point them up towards the top of the body and you're going to evenly sandwich them in between the body piece and the bottom piece. I put mine about an inch away from that middle point once I'm done like messing with them. Leave a tiny bit of space at the top for when you do the corners and then straight stitch along this bottom, locking the feet in place. So now the feet are in there, attached to the body, and it looks like this from the back. I'm marking the middle of the other side of the bottom again. You could just mark the bottom all the way down when you did it the first time if you're smart, but I didn't think about that. So there's that. And then your second body piece, you're gonna get the middle of this one as well. Pin that. All right, and now right sides together. Match those pins up. And pin those together. Again, I've been really loving the clip, so I'm just gonna put a clip on both sides. Kind of making sure that this ends up flat and nice and even. And to make sure you're even, you can kind of like stand it up a little bit and you can see that that is pretty much the same on both sides. So if you were to open up the body, it'll look like this with the bottom in the middle. So basically that's how the gnome will sit up. The feet will come out from that. So this side is going to be the front of your gnome and this side is going to be the back. So let's go stitch these two together. So the gnome now looks like this when it's opened up. So you have the bottom and then the front and the back. So we are going to flip it right side out. There are the little feet. Bring one side across to the other. You can pin or clip these if you'd like. I'm personally not going to. I'm gonna start at this corner and straight stitch almost all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna stop. Skip a couple inches and then keep going the rest of the way. If you're nervous about it lining up, you can completely stop here and restart at this corner. Just make sure you leave a gap about this wide. Um, I would say between three and five inches, depending on what material you used for your gnome. So we are here. There's an opening on the top. I did mark the middle because my gap isn't perfectly centered. And this next step, you kind of need it to be. So I put a mark there so that my eyes didn't trick me. This part is completely optional. This is when we start kind of getting into the parts that have multiple ways to do it. So I am gonna start at the center top and measure down, I'm going eight inches. So right here, and again, even this distance is kind of up to you. So I'm putting a mark where eight inches from this top is just by curving my tape measure. Now from the seam, not from the edge, from the seam, I am going to mark an inch in. And I actually think I'm gonna go straight across. Ugh, can't do this one handed. All right, so straight across, one inch is right there, from right there, okay? So right here, I'm just gonna open this up and make sure I like that mark. Okay, yeah. So I like it going straight across. So the line will be kind of like this. Um, you don't really have to mark that. I'm just kind of doing it to show you. So that's the one inch line. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So start here, come down to eight. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it so I can lift my tape measure 
And then a good way to do this actually would be making sure that your gnome is straight and seeing if these line up. Mine do not. So I'm gonna put this line on a flat edge on my grid and then come right over to the same line on this side and mark one inch from the seam. Now, I don't know why that didn't turn out even, but that's why you should always check. My stitching probably wasn't the exact same all the way around or something, uh, but whatever. So you have these one inch marks marked and I'm gonna cut that slit to make it into a armhole. Try not to go too far. Okay. And then on this side, just gonna go in like this. Perfect. So now we have armholes because when you open it up like this, there's a hole right here. Um, another option for this is you can leave that and when you flip it, you'll be able to either glue or hand stitch the arms to the side of your gnome. I have found that making these armholes and just kind of stitching them in here keeps them obviously on longer. So durability wise, I recommend these armholes and the hat covers them up. So that's why they can just be like holes. So the last thing we're going to do on this body for now is we're going to close up these bottom corners. So this is what's going to make your gnome sit. You're going to bend this up, which is why you wanted to leave yourself a little bit of room and flatten this out as centered as you can. Now the body one is going to be slightly, slightly longer. It's just to kind of give it more of a curve so that um, the gnome sits nicer and is a little bit less bumpy. That is on purpose. Now on this side, I didn't give myself enough room and you can see that it's more of a struggle to get those to line up. I'm going to pick a couple of these stitches and then straight stitch along here. It's almost like doing box corners if you've ever like made a bag or anything like that. So once you stitch those, you'll start noticing that your body is able to stand up. We're going to leave this here for a second. And now we're going to do with the hands what we did with the feet first. So you're going to right sides together. I don't know why I flipped that. Right sides, oh my goodness. Right sides together. Stitch this and then cut the triangles. You can go ahead and stuff these and clip them as well. So next we're doing the arms. Here they are, they're folded in half. And then the hands. So the arms are going to look like that. But what you wanna do first is take one of the hands with the arms flip the hand inside and line it up with that edge as close to this middle fold as you can get it. So we're gonna undo these, fold this back over. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull that even closer in. Flip. Kind of make sure that, oh, Make sure that you have both layers of the hands in there so you don't have to redo it. Flip it again. And then if you can see, when I clipped it, this kind of got uneven, but these are just like squares, so that's no big deal. And then we're gonna do it to the other one. And the hands, if you notice too, they're not perfectly round, kind of like the feet were. Like the feet, it doesn't really matter which one goes where, but the hands kind of curve up a bit. The side that curves up should be against the fold rather than the raw edge right now, because that will kind of make the wrist look like that from the front. Like it's going like that. I don't know how to explain it. You'll be able to tell, I think. Can these, So now here comes another preference. I'm gonna straight stitch across the bottoms here, and then you can either straight stitch straight up to kind of make the arms flare on both sides of the hand a little bit, or you can start where you feel the hand starting and kind of angle and go around that way to make it so that it's like tight around the wrist. I think that both look fine. Um, I'll go ahead and square this one 
and show you what that looks like. So here's what that looks like. Just, you know, here and here, I left the top open. So I'm gonna trim down this seam allowance a little bit. Um, if you're making your body out of felt, this is just a little more important than like something with less shape because you want as little bulk in these arms as possible so that they don't like stick out. At the corner down by the hand, cut that corner off pretty close to the seam if you can. And then repeat. Mm -hmm. And you'll see what I mean by stick out. All right, so now you can flip these. Be careful with your rotary cutter, my friends. I had a <laughs> misstep. Anyway, so the arms you want to stuff very lightly, like so lightly that I'm just using tool scraps. I'm pushing them with a pen or something. Um, and like a very small one, just cause you don't want them to look flat, but you don't want them to be so stuffed that when you sew them into these holes, they'll stick out. Sorry. When you sew them into the holes, they'll stick out like that. You want them to still be able to fall. So you don't want them to look empty, but you don't want to overdo it either. Okay. I'll probably put more in here. Okay. So back to the body. Um, the part facing the camera is the front. You know that because the seat, seat, the feet are sewn in here. So you want the non-seamed side, basically the fold of the arm to be facing this way when you flip it. So we're going to enter, enter. We're going to put the arm through this hole at the top with the seam facing the back. And you're just going to pull it through this hole. If it doesn't fit perfectly, you can widen the hole a little bit. Um, but so basically that's gonna go in here and you are gonna stitch that hole closed. As close to this little opening as you can to prevent as much like puckering as possible, but a little bit's okay. And now again, this part is optional. So skip this, you probably did already. If you're gluing or hand stitching your arms to the outside, or if you're leaving the arms off. I should have mentioned it before, but like gnomes don't need arms. I think they look adorable, but if you don't feel like doing the arms, don't do them. This is what it looks like pinned. Looks a little funky. I'm just gonna straight stitch right there. All right, so we're here now. This is the bottom, um, this is the top. So these are the seams that we just made. I'm gonna trim them a little bit, like just these little corners. And as you can tell, it's really starting to stand up on its own. It's doing its thing while we are doing ours. Okay. Trim up some extra threads if you have any. Okay. All right, now from this opening at the top, we are flipping him inside out. All right, so here is our gnome so far. It sits, um, you can tell that the arms are still gonna kind of poke out. Like to test it, you can kind of fill this up and do that, but I'll show you how to fix that later. So here's where we are. This is also one, if you didn't sew the arms in, I would maybe go ahead and mark spots for them and either glue or stitch them on because the next thing we're gonna do is the hat, nose, and beard, which will cover up the top of the arms here. I personally have no shame in hot glue, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my hot glue gun because I am gonna hot glue the hat, nose, and beard in place on the gnome body to make them look like one. I went ahead and brought my hat and my nose over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna do the hat first. So right now it's folded in half on that fold. I'm gonna unfold it and this bottom Right here, I'm gonna hem. So just fold over once and hem it. You could use hem tape if you wanted, but I did that one time and it wasn't that great. All right, so here's that hem and then from the inside. So now you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it in half again with the hem on the bottom, right sides together. And we are going to straight stitch the long side of the triangle to close it up.
So now that we have our hat done, set that aside. It's not fully done, but we're done sewing it. Grab your nose and we're gonna do a basting stitch all the way around this edge. Now, basting stitch is simply a straight stitch at the length turned all the way up. On my machine, it's a four. So I have the nose on here ready to go and I'm just gonna come over here and turn this all the way up and then straight stitch all the way around with no back stitching. Back stitching keeps your um, stitch in place and this one we are actually going to move. Stop here, no back stitching again. All right, coming back to the hat at the bottom, you're gonna wanna trim this seam allowance so that you can't see it when you flip it. You can cut it all the way up if you would like to, but it doesn't really matter that much, so I'm just gonna taper mine off. And then up at the top here, cut straight across as close to that point as you can, and that will just help it come to a point when you flip it which you can do now. And if you're gonna put a pom-pom on the, on the end of the hat, like you don't have to get this out perfectly, but if you're not, go ahead and like pick this point out. I'm gonna leave it uh, like this. So now we have a gnome hat. So there's that. Now on your nose, take your bobbin threads. Again, mine is brown, but yours can be matching, whatever it is. Ideally, they don't overlap. And starting with one side, you're just in a pull. And this is gonna gather this nose. Um, pick whichever side is the right side and start pushing that out because this is gonna kind of become like a bowl shape. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to the other side of the thread and pull this side just to kind of get it even. Kind of pull this along the thread. Try not to break it. Um, if you are notorious for breaking threads, I would do two just in case you break one, you're good on the other. So when you get it to about here, go ahead and stop and I'm gonna stuff the nose and I'm gonna stuff the hat. Now you might be like, why would I stuff the hat? It's because if you put the hat, it obviously won't fit. It just falls, right? But if you stuff it a teeny tiny bit, it'll stand up on the gnome head. Not like straight up, unless you wanted to, and then you can stuff it to that. But yeah. So I am using these tool scraps again and just kind of like scrunching it up and putting it into the hat, kind of at the tip. Mm, all right, and then I want a little bit more. It's gonna cut some more off. Okay, a little more, just kind of until you feel like it's necessary. And you can always put more in before you glue or sew it on. So, I'm gonna stop here for now, and then I just won't even stop recording. Okay, whoa, sorry. All right, because now, so now the hat is stuck, and when you put it on your head, See, and then you'll be shocked. I kind of overdid it a little bit. Because the idea is that it still kind of falls over, but like stays up. Look how much gnomier that looks. You know what I mean? I'm gonna use these tool scraps for the nose as well. Um, that's one thing that's really nice about these fabrics is that like when you stuff them, you can't really see the fabric that you use to stuff it from the outside. So you can kind of use whatever you want. I guess it depends on whatever fabric you chose, but like this fleece that I got doesn't really show anything. So as you go, just keep pulling these threads closed. Kind of see if you need more. I definitely do. Okay. I'm gonna put in one more little piece. And kind of bunch it and look at it. Kind of shape it depending on what you use. 
going to get some of these wrinkles out if you want. I kind of like the way they look. They're kind of cute. I'm going to put in one more small piece. Well, this one's kind of big, but whatever. All right. I am going to finish shit. I broke that thread. See, that's why you got to be careful. Anyway, luckily it stayed in place. Pulling this side. All right. So now, here we are. Nose. Nice and puffy. Now here's another preference moment. You can hand stitch this shut under here, or you can glue it shut. I'm gonna glue it. All right, so I kind of use too much glue. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm just gonna kind of hold it here so that it stays in this shape while it is cooling off. So this is just kind of what you want it to look like from the outside. Careful. Here I'm just stuffing my gnome with fabric scraps. That's one of my scrap bags that I'm pulling material out of. And I'm just smashing it in there, filling in any little creases that form and all that good stuff. Once it's stuffed to your liking, close this hole. You can stitch it shut or you can glue it. Like I've been saying this whole time, I have no shame in my glue game. So I'm gonna glue it real quick. And then glue your beard on. I did put a beard guide on the pattern, um, but you can just kind of put it wherever you like it. And then you're gonna put some more glue and glue your nose like halfway on the body, halfway on the beard and kind of fluff up any fluff into the glue to cover that up. Fit the hat to your liking. Glue all the way around those edges. Put more where you think it's necessary. Cover the armholes. It should come like halfway down the back. Here is your finished product. And if your arms stick out too much for your liking, I recommend just hand sewing the wrist to the body like this with embroidery thread. I'm not going to. I kind of like the way that mine looks. But there he is. So here he is. Looks so cute sitting next to his girlfriend. And this one you can see I did not put the arms on. So this is what it looks like if you don't put on arms. And then to put the braids on instead of the beard, you just bypass the beard. You um, braid a bunch of yarn together and then glue it under the hat or stitch it under the hat instead of gluing the beard under the hat. And then the girl's hat is pulled down a little bit more. So that's what that would like. This one is more like resting on his shoulders. All of that kind of stuff is personal preference. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you like the pattern. Let me know what you think below and have a great week.